Okay, eight, nine, study link. And the math box. Whoops, here it is. Okay, page 379, we have spreadsheets here. So your spreadsheet compares the average cost of meals eaten at home versus meals eaten in restaurants for a family of four during one week. Okay, so how many breakfasts will the family eat in one in seven days, one week? And we can fill this out. I think you can pause and probably do that on your own. If not, I'll I'll um, have the answers up here in a minute. So go ahead and pause. Okay. So obviously, there's four people in seven days. Four times seven and then how many total meals in one week so we need 28 times seven so we get 196 record formulas in the spreadsheet that can do some of these calculations for us okay so they want to know what name the cell like b4 c3 okay and what you do in order you know multiply divide add subtract what operation you do to find out the total cost before i do that i read that question number two wrong so the total number of meals in one week so if they eat 28 breakfasts, how many lunches will they eat? 28. How many dinners will they eat? 28. So we take 28 times 3. Sorry about that. So this is, we already had the week answer there. That should be 84. So for our formulas, we would take B3, the cost per person is $1, times the number of meals per week, C3, and then we would get our total cost. They told you to put the formulas in there. Um, well, we're gonna get to the amounts down below. Lunches, we would take the $2, so B4 times the number of meals in a week, C4, and we would get D4, the total cost. So looking back at your journal page, Record the formulas. Okay, that's what we just did. Number four, what is the least that the family can expect to spend for the week? So if we have 28 breakfasts and we have 28 lunches times $2, And if we have 28 times five, we get 140. And they wanna know how much that is all together. So 140 plus your 56 plus your 28 comes out to about 224. The family food budget is 300. So we have some left over that we can eat at restaurants a few times. So they're just asking you for possible answers to figure that out. And you can use your calculator if you want to. So if we have Maybe we're gonna eat 
breakfast out one day. That's going to be $16. So our total cost up here won't be $28. It'll be $24. Okay? I just filled those in before. I didn't, didn't put the formulas in. So we have a little extra money there. Maybe we'll have two lunches out. So this would put us down to 48. Uh, wait a second. Two times four lunches, eight people. Eight people times two is 16. Okay. So that means, oh, I did that backwards. This should be the eight. This would be a 64. I think we over, we're right at our limit now. Okay. Okay, I changed those on there. So we'll have 24 breakfasts at home, 20 lunches. I didn't change the dinners because we're, we're already really close to our $300. All right, something like that anyway. So Utah has five national parks. The Olson family, a family of four, lives in Salt Lake City and is planning a road trip. They're gonna start and end at home. They wanna visit all of the parks. In planning the budget for the trip, the Olsons are looking at costs for food, gas, and lodging. They'll be gone for one week. So use the cost information for home and restaurant meals from the math message. Okay, the one we just got done doing. The gas, they can go 30 miles per gallon, or they can take the van that's more comfortable for 20 miles a gallon. Whoops, sorry about that. So they have a choice here in their gas. Their food choice, well, let's keep going here on that. Okay, so they can take food from home or they can eat in restaurants while they're gone. Lodging, they're going to either camp in one of the parks or they're going to stay in a hotel. So here's the two lodging choices. Set up a spreadsheet like this, so just use this one here and just pencil in some formulas or some, some amounts, I guess I would just do the amounts. So we'll all probably have different numbers in here. I'm sure we will. So if we're going to be gone for seven days, I would probably do, that's 28 of us, 28 meals, four people. I would do every breakfast as breakfast bars or whatever I bring from home. Lunches are pretty cheap if you bring them from home. There's $2 each. So... But when you're traveling, you're not always going to be able to eat what you bring. It's not going to be always that simple. So let's just say twice a week, just like on the last page, twice a week we'll eat out and that'll put us at 20. We're going to have four people, so 20 meals. Dinner, well... Let's, let's do a couple of those dining out. So breakfast, we're going to put down nothing there. Our lunches, we're going to put down eight, so 64. Dinners, let's do, let's do a couple of those as well. So if we have eight times 15, that's $120. Okay, so... 20, that's 100. So, so far in food, I'm going to figure out what we have here. We have $352 of food. I don't know how realistic this is. It seems kind of cheap to me, but this is what we're going with. Okay. All right. So, if it's just a family of four, I would take probably the car. They live in Utah. 
they're not going out of Utah, so it's not that they're going to be traveling a long time. So I would I would take the car. So I will just write down 30 miles per one gallon. We need to figure out how many miles we're going here now. And then the lodging, well, let's say it's going to storm a couple nights of rain. We don't want to spend every night outside. So we've got a couple nights in the hotel, five times 15 out. So our lodging is pretty cheap, $275. So we still have to figure out the gas yet. So if we go on to page 381, it has us kind of planning our trip. I took it, the SRB pages right here, okay? So record the order below. So let's look at those trips. Let me blow this up here a little bit bigger. My cursor stopped working here. Let's, um, okay. They're starting at Salt Lake City. Sorry. So this should be the mileage to those parks. So if we were to pick the order, well, you want to start closer, closer. So we could say Capital Reef. And then, if you're looking at this map, that's right here. Then maybe we'll go to 270 Bryce. And then it looks like Zion, since you're going that direction, this way. Then we can go back to... Maybe the Canyonlands, 308. And then Arkies A at the bottom, okay? Okay, so I wrote the miles down there, 222, then 270, 309, 308, 229. Explain why you decided on that order, because if you look in the map there, let me pull the map over here. Whoops, sorry. We went, I went kind of, I just picked here, went this way, then I went back over here. It's, you're going to have to start on one side and then go to the other somehow, okay? So, going back. I have to move my chart here. Use the mileage chart. So let's add those up. We got about thirty. Oops, got about thirteen thirty-eight. So how can you determine the miles of gallons of gas the car is going to use? So it takes thirty gallons. No, sorry, thirty miles. per one gallon. And if we're going 1338 miles, how many gallons of gas are we going to need? Going to need about 44.6. And on the last page, I think it said gas was 375 a gallon times 375. You get about 167 and 25 cents of gas. That's our dollars. So we really only already did number four. 
Oh, for, for the gallons the car would use, the gallons the van would use. Okay, so the, the car, we said 44.6. And the van gets 20 miles per gallon. 66.9, let's just say 67. So a little bit difference in the in the mileage there. So number five, what formula can you use to calculate the number of not hotel nights on the number of camping nights? Okay, so we we did that really. Um, go back. So we took our C twenty one times. B21 for the camping and the hotel we took C22 times D22. So those would be the formulas. All right. Number six, what information do you enter in your spreadsheet and where do you enter it if you decide to use the car? So using the cell names, what they're just trying to get you to do is use the cell names. So the car is C16 and C17 for the number of gallons. And what is the least expensive trip the family can take? Well, camping every night, no hotels eating food from home, no meals out, and using the shortest, the least amount of miles with the car. The most expensive would be just the opposite. Eating every meal in a restaurant, staying every night in a hotel, using the van, taking your time and traveling around, don't, not caring about the mileage. So number nine, here's your spreadsheet. If you want to do that, you can. I'm going to just move on. All right. 382. Suppose you're interested in healthy habits of a typical sixth grader. You might ask the following questions here. How many glasses of water does a typical sixth grader drink per day? How many minutes of exercise? does a sixth grader get? How many servings of fruit and vegetables? Make up your own statistical question. We've talked about statistical questions before. Um, remember the key words here when we're talking about statistical. Typical sixth grader, typical sixth grader, okay? And we're averaging, we're averaging them per week, per week, per day, typical sixth grader. So there's a lot of typical or a lot of statistical questions a person could ask. How many minutes does the typical sixth grader spend on a school bus per day? Um, lots of questions you could ask. As long as you say the word typical and average it out, then I think you're probably okay. Um, since we are not going to be able to do this, we will just skip these questions. We're now on to the math box. Let me make this smaller here for you. And the study link. And that's the last lesson in this chapter.